Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at a very interesting cipher. And the cipher's name is Simplified AES. Simplified AES is, as the name suggests, a simplified version of the AES cipher. It is based on the ideas of the AES cipher and its intention is that you can use it to learn how AES actually works. And in this video, we will have a deep look into the cipher. We will see the building blocks and how the cipher works. I structured this video into seven different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at an overview of the SAS cipher and its history. Then we will have a look at its four building blocks, at round key, substitute nibbles, shift rows and mixed columns, as well as we will have a look at how the round keys of the cipher are generated. And finally, of course, we will do it in Crypt 22. We have a SAS implementation in Crypt 22 and we'll use it to encrypt and decrypt text. Simplified AES, abbreviated SAS, is to the AES cipher what the simplified DES is to the DES cipher. The SDES, the simplified DES, we also have an implementation in Crypt 22. So if you're interested in the simplified DES, have a look at it. And we already had a video on this channel about SDES. SAS was invented and published in 2003 by Musa et al. See the reference 2 here. And I also have this reference 1 here. That is a really interesting paper about how the cipher works. I suggest that if you want to implement SAS on your own, and I highly recommend that you do this since implementing these ciphers, these hand, uh, these easy ciphers on your own really helps you to understand these, you should use these two publications. SAS is a block cipher with a design based on the design of the original AES, as I already said, but it's intended as a learning tool in the classroom. SAS works on 16-bit blocks and it uses 16-bit keys. In comparison, AES has 128-bit blocks and uses 128, 192 and 256-bit keys. SAS consists of only two rounds. Compared to AES 128, which has 10, AES 192, which has 12, and AES 256, which has 14 rounds. Here we have an overview of the structure of the simplified AES. And simplified AES consists of four primitives, add round key, substitute nibbles, shift rows, and mixed columns. And as I have said in the previous slide, it consists of two rounds. You have round one and you have round two. Here we have encryption. The plain text goes into the cipher. We have an initial add round key. Then we have the first round, the first four primitives. Then we have the second round, again only with three primitives, because the mixed column step is omitted. And finally you get the cipher text. To decrypt, you go in reverse order through the cipher, you use the round keys here in the reverse order, and you use inverse primitives. For each of these primitives, you have inverse methods to decrypt text or to decrypt cipher text. And then we have expand key to generate two round keys. You have your first, your main key here, it goes into the cipher. It is used as round key zero, and expand key is used to generate round key one and round key two. SAS works on a two byte, which are 16 bit state. You can have a look at this here. You have byte zero that goes into the cipher as nibble one and nibble two. So a nibble are four bits of a byte, and it's important to have a look at the SAS in that way. And you have byte one, which also goes into the cipher. So we have this state here, and this will be modified when you go through the cipher by the different primitives. Let's have a look at each primitive on its own. The first primitive is the add round key. And add round key 
XORs a 16-bit round key onto the 16-bit state. For example, as you can see here, we have our plain text 3F, this is our first byte, 1B, our second byte. Then we have a round key, for instance, round key 0, which is XORed onto this here, and we obtain the final result 4E52. Let's have a look at an example of XORing a key nibble, so only 4-bit, with a state nibble. For example, we take the 3 here. 3 XOR 7 is 4. 3 can be written so this here is decimal or hexadecimal, since we also have F and E and so on. So you can also convert this to binary. A 3 is 1 plus 2 is 3, so 1, 2, 4, 8 in binary. We have 3 here. And we have 7 here. 1, 2, and 4 is 7. And when we XOR these two nibbles here, at each position where we have two ones, we have to write a zero. And on each position where we have two zeros, like the last one, we have to write a zero. Only at positions where we have a one and a zero, for instance, we have here one and here a zero, we write a one. And this is one, two, four, this here is four. So this is how add round key works. Clearly you do this for all the nibbles to obtain the next state. Let's have a look at substitute nibbles. Substitute nibbles applies a 4-bit S box, a substitution box, to the 16-bit state. For instance, we have as an input the output of the last primitive. We have 4e as the first byte and 52 as the second. We use the S box and we obtain df and 1a. How does this work? Let's have a look at an example of applying the S box to a state nibble. For instance, the 4 here. You can see the S box here on the right side, it's just a lookup table. We put in 4, 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. So you go to the, to the table here, you look at 0, 1, 0, 0, and then you see 1, 1, 0, 1. That's our output. This is in decimal 13 or in hexadecimal D. And you do this for all the nibbles in the substitute nibbles building block. Now let's have a look at shift rows. Shift rows exchanges the last two nibbles of the 16-bit state. For example, we have df and 1a, and we obtain da1f. So the last nibbles of the two bytes are just exchanged. They are shifted. And here you see the example. We use shift rows on df1a, and we obtain da1f. Only the last nibbles are exchanged. And here's one hint. The only primitive which is self-inverse is shift rows. All other primitives have an inverse which is used for decryption that is different from the actual function. In this case, clearly, if we have af here and we use shift rows again, we come back to fa here. Now let's have a look at the mixed column step, which is, in my opinion, the most difficult to understand step. And mixed columns applies a matrix M on the 16-bit state. And we compute the matrix not in the normal number system that we know. We use computing in the Galois field GF16. What this is, I won't explain in detail here. I plan to create a new video describing this. So we have our state here, DA1F, and we apply this matrix here, 1 x square x square 1, which is equivalent to a matrix 1, 4, 4, 1, but keep in mind that we use GF16, so we have the re reducible polynomial for GF16, which is x to the power of 4 plus x plus 1. How this works in detail, as I said, we will see in another video. Here's an example of applying mixed columns to the state. We use mixed columns on DA1F and we obtain 3B, 8B. And the DA is one vector here that we multiply with the M matrix and the 1F is another vector. Let's have a look at an example of a single vector operation. As I said, DA here in hexadecimal, this is our vector, we multiply it with the matrix. Matrix multiplication, as you probably know from school, works like this. We take the first um, element of the vector, multiply it with the first element of the matrix, multiply it by 1, then 
we take the, the second one a and multiply it with the second element here in the row of the matrix. Then we do the same for the second uh, row of the matrix. We use d multiplied 4 and a multiplied 1. So d multiplied 1 plus a multiplied 4 in the Galois field 16 is 3. And d multiplied 4 plus a multiplied 1 is in the Galois field 16 is b. So we obtain the vector 3b and we put this into our state. And we do the same for the second vector. Here I have now an example C-sharp code. And as I said, how the math works, the Galois fields, will be discussed in a later video. So in our code, we have the mixed columns function and it gets a byte array a state. These are two bytes. And here, for example, I marked in red, as we have seen in the previous slide, our vector. We have S00, which is one part of the vector, and S10, which is the second part. S00 is the first nibble. We use 0B1111 and AND our byte, so we only get four bits. And S01 are the other four bits that we obtain via shifting four to the right. And here we have now the matrix vector or vector matrix multiplication. We have here GF16 multiplication, and you can see here GF16 multiplication is just a pre-computed two-dimensional lookup table for multiplication in Galois field GF16 with the so-called reducible polynomial x to the power of 4 plus x plus 1. And the addition here is XOR. So we multiply the S00, which is our D in this case here, by 1, and then we uh, Add this using XOR to S10, which we multiply with 4 also using the GF16 field. And this is how we obtain our first part here of the new vector. And we do the same for the second part here. Multiplication by 4, this is this here. Multiplication again by 1, this is this here, to obtain our second part. And finally, we write the result back into our state for both of our vectors. First vector, second vector, first multiplication, second multiplication with the matrix. First result in our state, second result in our state. Now that we know how the basic building blocks work, we need to know how to expand key works. And expand key is also inspired by the AES key expansion algorithm. The first round key that we have, round key zero, is the original key that you put into the cipher. This is just unchanged used as you have seen in the cipher. And we have to generate round key one and round key two using the key expansion. How does this work? You put in the round key n, so an arbitrary round key. These are two bytes. And then the first byte here is xort with a g function used on the second byte. And then the, we obtain our first byte. And the second byte here is just the xor of the second byte of the previous key, xort, with the first byte of the new round key. Now interesting is how does the function g here works? And you can see g here on the right side. The g function works as follows. You put in one byte. This is again split into two nibbles. Then we have the rot word function that just changes the nibbles. So it takes the first four bits, puts these at the end, and it takes the last four bits, the second nibble, and puts it at the beginning. Then these two nibbles are used to calculate the S-box. So you use the S-box, you put the nibble into the S-box, and you obtain a new nibble. And you do this for both nibbles. So we have here n0 dash and n1 dash, our new nibbles. And finally, we xor again a so-called round constant onto this. This is this x to the power of 1 plus 2. This is again computed in the Galois uh, GF16 field, but it's just a lookup table. So you can implement this as a lookup table. You have for the first round key, you have 1, 0, 0, 0 that you XOR on the left side here on the first uh, four bits. And you have the second Archon constant B, uh, uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. This is a uh, second constant that you can, that you also XOR for round key 2. And clearly, you take the round key 0 as the original key. You use this construction here 
to compute the round key one. And then when you have the round key one, you use the construction again to compute round key two. Now that we know how simplified AES works, let's encrypt and decrypt using the simplified AES cipher component that we have now implemented in Cryptool 2. I am here now in the start center of Cryptool 2 and I use the current nightly build version 9590.1. So if you want to use SAS, you need at minimum this version. And right now, at the time of recording this video, you also need the nightly build. So SAS is not yet in the release version of Cryptool 2. To create or to use simplified AES, we create a new workspace. Then we search for SAES and we drag and drop the component onto the workspace. And since I also want to decrypt, I use it a second time. Then we want to encrypt text. So we can just put a text here onto the workspace and we write, hello world, this is a test of SAS in Cryptool 2. This will be our plain text. We connect, no, we don't connect. We need a few converters. We need string encoders on the right side and decoder on the left side. And this here will now convert our string to a byte array. To do so, we change this from text UTF-8. Now this is okay. If you encrypt to stream, connect these two. Then we have here, and we change this text UTF-8. This is also okay. And we need text output. And this text output will be our cipher text. And we also want to have decrypted plain text. And the cipher text, it doesn't make sense to um, format it as UTF-8 text. We want to see hexadecimal. Then we connect the first AES with the second one, and the output here. And the output here for the decryption for the decrypted plain text. Now we need a key. And the key we want to enter as binary. So we have here our key. And we have to format it. Remember, SAES uses 16 bit keys. So I change the string decoder here to binary. So you can just enter ones and zeros and it will be interpreted as binary values. We connect the key here and the key here. And then let's have a look at the settings. SAES we want to have as an action encrypt. Electronic codebook in this demonstration is fine. We don't want to have any padding. And the second AES or SAES should decrypt. Now we need a key. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight binary key. Yeah, let's test it. Yeah, and as you can see, this works really well. So our plain text is converted here to a crypto stream. The SAS component encrypts it using this key here. We get our cipher text here. For, for fun, we could also change this also to binary, but this will be very long. <laughs> okay, yeah, here you can see now we have a binary um, text here. And we can also visualize, for instance, how good the, <laughs> if you can say good with the with a cipher with 16-bit, how good this cipher works. We will have a look at the changes here, show only differences. And now when we change a single bit, on average 50% of the bits should change. And let's change another bit. And it always marks which bits here are changed. So really interesting to analyze the cipher. Yeah, and as you can see, it still can decrypt since we give the same uh, key to the encryptor and the decryptor here. Let's for fun change the block mode to cipher block chaining and cipher block chaining. Usually it wants an initialization vector. Probably it will now show us a warning that we have no IV. Yeah, that's right. Here, let's have a look. Initialization vector too short, zero, extend to two bytes. It automatically extended our init vector to two bytes, but these are all set to zero. But for the demonstration, it's fine. Now let's again change a bit. 
And we again see how many bits here are changed in our output ciphertext. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. You now know how simplified AES works, the building blocks, the key schedule, and so on. And you've also seen how to implement a workspace where you can use SAS to encrypt and to decrypt text. I also suggest that you take the original publication and the other publication I've shown you in the slides and you should try to implement it on your own because to fully understand these ciphers it always makes at least for me sense to implement these in code. Yeah and as I said this is everything I wanted to show you. I hope you like this video. If yes please give a thumbs up. Also if you did not yet subscribe to this channel please do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.